yesterday, folks. Uh, somehow. Yesterday, the system wasn't reading. Really this is the military. They're working on all kinds of crazy shit. Uh, he invented the internet, tried teleportation. I thought your dad was in energy research. Yes, but dad worked for Eastern Power and Electric. I mean, is, is thermomagnetic accelerator navigation drive? I don't understand. This is, this is some sort of a machine. What, like a computer or something? No, no not a machine. Uh, uh, these, these schematics, these equations, like the theory of relativity, and the pressure ratio. Okay, so I don't know if you could hear all that stuff, but I bet you probably could. So, the other day, we tried to do a video in here the other day. Um, tried to explain a crazy dream that I have. Weird dream. Flipping out there. But, um, that was just kind of odd. I mean, so I tried to explain that dream to people, and, you know, a lot of people would think, it's like, you know, I don't know. So, let's see what people thought of yesterday's video. Get in here. Go to here. And I'll go to here. Mm. This is just so pitiful. It's bad, folks. Apparently nobody watched the video, so let me check something here. We detected your video may be shaky. There was no video in that video. It's kind of odd. Hmm. Very interesting. Hmm. Pretty interesting. So, I was thinking about this dream again this morning. I didn't have it again last night, though. But. In these dreams where you fly, anybody ever interrupt your flight? You know, it's kind of crazy. See my new phone? So, um, that's the first time. Because my dreams are, you know, I can pretty much do a lot of stuff within the dream. But um, in my dream, it's not the same. And I don't know, I wouldn't say your dreams, but some people say when they dream they have no control within their dream. Sometimes people when they sleep they don't they don't know they dream. When you're riding an elephant on a purple cloud, you're probably dreaming. When you're underwater talking to a fish, you're probably dreaming. When you're flying over a volcano, you're probably dreaming. I don't know. But in this dream, it's the the texture of the, the like a cube. The texture of the cube was like a like a dog's nose. And it was like breathing. These holes were opening and closing. And I was falling. It's a trip. But there's another dream. I still have this dream every now and then. And um, there's dinosaurs and there's little fuzzy people and shit in it. And um, I don't never, I can never remember how the dream starts or the origination of the starting point of the dream. But there's this point in the dream where I land. It's like desert all around. And there's like 
a little black building with a green door, and you go in and it's a bar. And every time I go in the bar, there's trouble, and I have to run out and fly off somewhere, and I fly off towards uh, the volcanoes and fucking dinosaurs and shit. That is one of my favorite dreams. It's because I know there's going to be some shit in the bar that I can never avoid. Always some problems with these little furry creatures and shit. You know. And, um, take off flying. It's a trip. But when I get past the volcano, I really don't get too much further. It's always like, wake up. I remember one time I was in the same dream. I was like, okay, I just landed. I'm not going in the bar. And I started flying. And it seemed like the volcano was like further away. And I'm like, damn. Now, how do you fly when you're in your Sometimes my hands propel me. Put them on my side. Not like Iron Man. I don't think my feet ever have any action in these flights. I'm always flying with my hands or some shit like that, you know. It's like never with a suit, no mechanical armor, just me and my super brain knowledge and all that crap. Wow. Well, when you're in these dreams, what about the bad dreams? The nightmares. Now I don't know if you heard the video from yesterday, but while I was flying towards the city, and you know, I've flown over thousands of cities. I've gotten so high up in the air that I couldn't even see the land anymore, and I just wake up because I don't know where the hell I am. You know what I'm saying? So, I literally remember certain dreams where I'm flying from rooftop to rooftop like Peter Pan literally stopping. I remember one time I went to a house and I'm like, wow, it's a trip. And went back out. And it seems like when I'm in these dreams like this, I'm looking for a location or a marker. I remember one dream I had, I specifically knew, this is Oakland, California. I'm going to fly home from Oakland. I start lifting off in the air, and seems like as soon as I get near like I'm going towards home, I always wake up. It's kind of odd that several of these dreams when I want to try to fly home, I wake up. It was odd the other night when I woke myself up after falling on some weird wet floor. It was wet. And it was moist. And it, and it gave like, like like it was a skin or something. It was, I mean, it's like, it was like, like being on a mat, a cold mat. That was the consistency of dog's nose. I mean, it's like weird. I woke up. And when I woke up, my eyes wouldn't fully adjust it. Because where I saw something on the ceiling, like looking down at me like fucker got away. I don't know. But when it comes to dreams, a long time ago, people, people lived Literally. Oh my God, what happened to me last night, Joel? Paying thousands of dollars for people to read their dreams. Big and think of it, 70s and 80s. You know, and then they had the TV psychics, the telephone psychics. It's like, yes, I am having trouble. How'd you know it's financial? Yes, I'll pay another 99 cents for a minute. And America went bad like that. There's even books on dreams. So, what is actually a dream? Is it your, your subconscious? Is it you in a real world doing real things? 
is a dream of flight, an out-of-body experiment, experiment, <laughs> experience, or maybe it is an experiment by somebody else, I don't But what is it when you dream? What do you get from a dream? What can you learn from your dreams? These are questions that you, you probably got to find somewhere deep. You can't get the answers from me. And I'm pretty sure you can't get the answers from yourself. The answers may just very well be inside those dreams. There's legend and rumor that when you have an outer body experience, dreams and everything, it's interdimensional beings taking you away from your body so they can inhabit your body while you're away from it. The further they take you away from your body, the least likely you'll be able to make it to get back to your body. Sort of like these dreams I've been having. The further I fly away, the freer I feel. But as soon as I decide to turn back home, to go home, find my home in the real world, I either wake up rudely or I feel as if somebody's watching me when I do wake up. Like I'm the one that got away. Like that maybe there's something flying over our world at night as we sleep and they're casting out their lines to reel us in. Maybe we're more than what we believe we are. Maybe we are a multi-dimensional being. We live like our planet does. It has nights and it has days. There's periods of time where we have to close our eyes and give in to our subconscious. You're tired, you're just fed up, and you're sleepy. And you go to sleep and all the stress of the real world goes away. Because when you close your eyes in this world, you open your eyes up on that beach, in that vacation, in that different period of time where you were happier. You close your eyes and wake up in the other world as a child, having a nightmare, a bad fit of something that you want to forget. You close your eyes and you're that superhero that basketball star, that football player, the greatest baseball player that ever lived. In your subconscious may lie who you really are. Maybe your soul comes to this world just to tell you to chill out. Maybe the real you lives in the other world, the world that you see when you are asleep. Maybe you're asleep right now and this you in this realm is seeing this video and when you go to bed tonight you're gonna wake up in that other world in that other realm for however long it takes 24 hours in this world is how many in that on an average people are sleeping less and less why some people have dreams they can't get rid of some people have memories that haunt their dreams. Why is all this anything? Why is any of this important? It's because this is you. This is a part of you. This is your mind. This is your mind controlling you. This is your mind telling you what you need to do to relax or refresh itself. The stress that you deal with in real life or the lack of stress you deal with Whatever you deal with, when you go to sleep, you deal with something different. When you're asleep, your body is here and your mind is someplace else. And why is that? Why is it that the human body shuts down purposely to rejuvenate itself from the stress, from the reality? Or is it just because we're a multi-dimensional creature. 
Half of us lives in this world, and half of us lives in the other. The key is this. If we can never learn how to use both hemispheres of our brain, we might be able to see in that world without having to be asleep. We might be able to control our subconscious and destroy our fears without having to be asleep. If you threw me out of plane right now, do you think I think I could fly? The feeling of flying would be there for a brief few seconds, but the reality of hitting the ground would always be there. Unlike those dreams where I could take off and take flight over majestic lands looking at beautiful creatures from a time long past. Unlike those dreams, you cannot just fly. You can't just put your hands down to your side and think and lift off. And if I could, I would. I'd be in the skies right now, flying over your cities and your towns, trying to figure out how to land. But other than that, what do you get? You get a sense of well-being when you allow yourself to get the proper rest. A lot of people don't have time to rest. They don't have time to just let things go. Clear their mind. They're stressed. They're beaten. They're enslaved to the point of mind collapse. They video record TV shows and then watch them all when they get home from work because like they've missed something. Because fighting those zombies, flying that jet plane, solving that mystery, those are things people used to find when they go to sleep. When they used to dream of being Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys. When they dreamed of being on stage with the Beatles and Jacksons. When they dreamed of having a life other than the real one they have that causes all the stress and pain that creates the mental Shangri-La that they must run to. And then we have the mentally deranged whose dreams of horrific crimes cloud their reality. And then when something happens in real life, oh, I had a dream. I did this. See, your subconscious is there to do things that you shouldn't do. Maybe. I don't know. But there's a lot of sick and twisted people who blame things on their dreams. One more thing about dreams. They can be manipulated. You can fall asleep with a television on. And as the crew of the Enterprise travels through space, the sounds of their adventure filter through your head and intermingle with your subconscious. Thus, giving you flights of fancy. Falling asleep with music playing also does the same thing. You can fall asleep playing some classical music, a beautiful sonata to put your mind at ease. And you'll be off in a dream world of lollipops and gumdrops. You can fall asleep listening to the sounds of the waves guide yourself into a dream of being on a tropical beach with the ocean right out in front of you. You can listen to some heavy metal hate rock and have some dreams of busting some nigger skulls. Some dumb crazy shit like that. You can listen to some rape rap. Dream about fucking bitches and pimping little 13 year old girls out. You can fall asleep watching a serious horror movie and scare the shit out of yourself. Wake up with a urine soaked bed. You can cause yourself a lot of damage by screwing with yourself 
while you're in your subconscious mode. Falling asleep with hypnotism tapes on to better yourself could also screw you up. Especially if you're not paying attention to the tape that you put in. Falling asleep while watching porn may cause you to be a sexual deviant of some sort. Always being horny or some shit like that. Thinking about taking something that is definitely not yours. Your subconscious is a realm that a lot of people want to play with. A lot of people want to delve into. A lot of people want to do things with. Your subconscious is yours. You shouldn't be listening to something while you're woke. While you're watching something like this. And have something piped in to your subconscious. You might not believe it. But people can do it. They call them subliminal messages. And subliminal messages are located in every form of media in the United States of America. In every form of media. There's suggestive. There's informative. There's all kind of things that they pump through the airways for whatever reason. And some of these things attack your subconscious. Your consciousness is yours. To be or not to be is the answer to the question, am I or can I? You can. You will. If you want to. But you must learn to control your mind before someone else learns to do it. Because when they control your mind and you don't, you end up buying things. You end up wanting things. You end up needing things. And you end up enslaved. Someone says, man, are you going to get the new iPhone 6 Plus? You going to get the new... Galaxy Edge, whatever. And I just said, I want the biggest phone for the lowest price. So, I called the phone company. Because this is in the real world, folks. And I said, well, we'll get you an upgrade. Well, remember, this is an upgrade from this. I liked my My Touch. But I'm old school. I'm not going to buy the new one. I'm not going to buy the slide one. I'm not going to buy this one. I'm going to buy that one. I'm going to buy this one. I wasn't going to get a new phone. Plug start acting jankity. Plug it up and it charge sometimes, sometimes it don't charge. You put a brand new cable on here, it charge, whatever. So now it's a hassle. I'm somehow ticked off that I have to set my phone down a certain way so it'll charge. Perfectly fine phone. Takes excellent pictures been on several vacations I'm having a problem when the phone sits and charges and I'm nowhere around it subconsciously this phone's no good anymore and my subconscious is saying the phone's gone it's done the phone still works 
you plug it up, you set it to the side, it charges. Get on the phone. Cheap, remember. I'm not going to spend my money on a bunch of crap. I'm not going to spend my money on a fad. I want a phone better than the last one. Anybody with a brain in their head knows that this my touch is better than the cheapy LG. Now, take it. The woman's voice was soothing on the phone. Well, sir, you know you need a new phone. You could do better, but that old phone has just got to go. That's why you're having so many problems with it. Her voice was so sweet and soothing to my subconscious. And I'm a man, so I'm like, damn. What is she going to say next? Uh, how can I get her to talk longer on the phone? Because when you're a man, sometimes you're lonely. <laughs> Men just like hearing women's voices. I'll tell you the truth. I can, listen to women. I can listen to women talk all day and not pay attention to anything they say. And just listen to <laughs> that sweet voice. Where's your accent from? Hmm. $50,000 to build my card. So where do you say you're from? But, so the voice is soothing me. Yeah. You're right. I'll take the LG. Well, basic shitty phone excuse my language so I agree to pay a hundred and fifty dollars for this phone it's gonna mail it to me anyway I don't have to go see nothing stick it in the mail I oh, got it no problem get the phone this is not I repeat this is not this oh no I had a genius button on here. I could phone. Uh, where's the restaurant over on 15th Street's name? The restaurant you're talking about on 15th Street is Joe's Barbecue. Yeah, send me 16 ribs and some sweet potato salad. Phone with the bomb. Shh, don't say bomb on videos. Shh, say the bomb. That phone was awesome. My touch. Awesome phone. LG. Where's the restaurant? LG? The restaurant on 5th Street, what's the name? What's the LG don't give a shit about me. My touch cared. So I'm saying to myself, how do I let this lady soothe me on this phone? To take a phrase from that movie interview, you get honey dipped when you're a man. So you're going to try to figure out what I'm talking about now. Because it all belongs to the first part of the video. Pay fucking attention, please. We allow ourselves to be tantalized and teased and talked to and played with through our subconscious. So this time, I really do want a new phone. This phone, I just don't like it. It was cool, about three hours. Go check it. First of all, when I got the phone, it had no case on it. So you got this phone, right? Here, you got this LG, and then you got the My Touch. I love the My Touch and the LG Square and all that, and the My Touch and LG, a little smaller than the My Touch. My Touch. You have a phone in your hand. I can ball this phone up around my fist and bust your nose with this motherfucker. Now I'll grab this phone right here and hit you in it and cut my wrist off of it. It just crumble like a piece of paper. Just, I love the weight of this. Obsolete. I even bought a little plastic little cover for that too. It was all great. This phone. It was so light I'm like, oh my god. I'm going to break this little damn thing. <laughs> camera sucks. So I bought a little $7 case. $7 case. Now. Now it's the phone. Now. Now I can feel this. This is a real phone. Now, a lot of men don't get the color red. I like red. I, my convertibles were all red. I like red. 
When I drive Jaguars, they must be gold toe. Cadillac brown. But now, I like it with this cover on it. I paid $150 for this phone because the lady honey dipped me. 15 minutes. After that, I got online. I found the same phone for $25. But of course, I called her back. I was like, hey, man, you haven't emailed me my phone yet. They said, you shouldn't buy those phones offline. <laughs> Most of them have bad ESNs and they don't work. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. So this time, I said to myself, don't break away from what you do. Use the cheap one. So what I did, I went and bought the Sony Xperia. Uh, Z1, pre-used, pre-owned or whatever, extra 10 bucks a month. They give you 15 days to return it if you don't want it, buyer's remorse or whatever they say. But this is California, in California you get 30 days. I didn't like that phone. It was waterproof, 20 megapixel camera, wonderful phone. Felt like a candy bar in my hand. You dial the number, and because I like the battery save thing, you dial a number and then the phone goes completely black, but it's completely black on both sides. So you got a black piece of glass in your hand. Going, wow. Didn't like it. Mailed it back, got the LG G2. Wonderful phone, beautiful camera. Problem with that phone is 32 gigabytes of memory. Internal only. But the research I did on that phone showed that you could add memory. Asian version of that phone. Not the US version. My bad. Mail that phone back. My ex wife she gets the iPhone six. She comes over. Big phone. I'm a man, I had this. I got to get me an iPhone six. So I did some research. After I sent back the Sony, after I sent back the LG, I decided to go with a pre-owned phone two years ago. I had less memory than the LG, which I mailed back strictly because it had memory issues. This phone, I can update the memory, only the 35, uh, 32 gigabytes. But it only has 16 in the phone. I'm limited. But one thing I did get is I got more knowledge about phones. And I know I don't have to go listen to a sweet voice playing my innermost feelings. I bought the ZTE Z Max. Now, the Z Max first came out, see the difference in size? When the Z Max first came out, it was an expensive phone. Got upgradable memory. It does not have Android 5. That's a problem for me, but I can update. This phone is $150. This phone was $150. And I found it for $25 the same day I bought it for $150. I found this same phone brand new, maximum, maximum price, the most expensive I've seen was 200 A phone, the comparable size to this, this is 5.7 inch screen, pretty good screen and all that, pretty good sound. I hooked up my Amazon instant video to it, works perfect. I also hooked up my, um, my whole Amazon, my Amazon music and all that stuff, perfect. Nice big screen for you. A seven dollar case on it. You know. That's the picture of one of my artworks that we have, we bought, you know, back in the day, on in the background. But this is as big as the iPhone. Does just about the exact same thing as the iPhone. The people at the place saw what I did. I went from a $250 phone to a $200 phone 
to a hundred and fifty dollar phone for five dollars extra a month until it's paid off. My whole bill every month is like fifty five dollars now. The thing is this I called to ask a couple more questions. Then I get the voice again on the phone. Oh, you've used all your data. You have that new phone. You're going to need more data. I know we have you on an unlimited plan, but for $10 more, your service won't be slowed down. Now, I just added $5 more by getting another phone. I paid $7 for this case, and I bought another case for $9, which is coming today. This case right here does not have a screen protector across the front, so I want a case that will put the screen protector across the front. I'm not going to buy another phone from T-Mobile or any other place again after this phone, because I have found where you can buy unlocked phones on the internet up to 7 inch screens for less than $500. Now, why would anybody in their right mind pay $125 more than they should for this phone? Stop using a phone that completely worked already. Continue to pay into something and not get anything back. You have to realize that when they play on your subconscious, because that sweet voice would have got me. Yeah, you're right. This $150 phone does need to be insured for $10 a month. So at any given point, I can go ahead and get another $150 phone for $5. What happens if I don't break this phone? Nothing ever happens to it. Well, I found a replacement screen for the LCD for $20 on eBay. You go to the mall. This is like a tablet. They fix tablets for $45. They'll put a new screen on you for $40. You see what I'm saying? Control your own subconscious. Because that lady was talking real good. And her shit was smooth. You got a brand new phone, man. You need to protect that. For $10 extra a month, you can give insurance on your phone and will be replaced for $5. And then I went on to say to her, you're going to replace it with a comparable phone, right? I'm not going to be able to just get any phone, right? So yeah, it has to be comparable to your phone. So a $150 phone gets you a $150 phone. If I would have kept that $250 phone for the extra 10 bucks a month, then yes, it would have been in my best interest because I would have went and got a $250 phone, but that's still a bad deal. I should have got the phone for $27 a month. The phone that they're featuring, the Edge or the, the Apple 6. The expensive phones. The phones that cost $750, you pay the $10 a month so you can get another $750 phone. But, when you fall for that deal, come next year, your phone breaks, they're going to make you get the exact same phone, which would now be worth about $150. Do not let society, big corporations, and people play on your subconscious. Because if I would have just been a regular man and let some sweet-talking woman talk me into buying a $700 phone and then let somebody talk me to spend an extra $10 for extra data that I don't use and then an extra $10 for the insurance, then my subconscious would have let me down. My subconscious would have just said, you know what, give in, bend over, let them have all your money. Sometimes we have to stand up for ourselves, and maybe today you need to stand up for your subconscious. Maybe you need to work on, you know, clearing up your third eye, if you know what I'm talking about. Get that pineal gland going. Clear your brain out from this crap, you know, 
because once again, now that I got a big old giant phone, now they're talking about radiation is bad for people. Now, radiation, got to be more radiation coming off this than it was this. Or this. I don't know. I'm just telling you people, it's time to free your mind. You know? And the rest will follow. This has been 40 minutes. And you know what? I think I'm coming out of the fog now. You know, you guys have been getting videos on time. And if you pay attention, some of them even have meanings. You've been tubed. <laughs>